From time to time, Srila Guru Maharaj is reminding us, informing us and that the upper world, the spiritual world, the word of, world of our guardians, of Krishna consciousness, that it is real and substantial. Because there is a tendency on our part we're, uh, to we're so um, riveted to the mundane uh, and the <clears throat> mundane world, the temporary world. We think this is the substantial place because, you know, it's made out of earth, you know, boom, earth, water, fire, things you can stand on, touch, feel, they have weight, breath, dimension, etc. We think this is the real world. Then we hear about Krishna consciousness and we can think that's like a theoretical world. This is the real world we live in and how much all of this is true, what we're hearing, how much it can be relied upon, we're doubtful. This is the plight of a neophyte devotee to be honest and candid. We're hearing things. So we think that is imaginary. When the people hear about Puranic legends and story, they think like, oh, you mean Hindu mythology. But they're very happy to embrace the mythology of Hollywood or of this, that, or the other, that they get all excited about. But uh, anyway, story. We're told the, um, you know, fiction. Some say, if you want to tell the truth, write fiction. Seems like uh, some sort of an oxymoron. Right? But a quote variously attributed to Picasso or any other is that, you know, art is a lie that tells the truth. What it means in that statement is that if the, the, in the end, you receive truth or become aware of the truth, embrace the concept of truth, the, the medium through which it came to you, whether that is objectively, historically accurate, is irrelevant. And again, this requires a new type of thinking or more careful thought. Sometimes it occurs to me that uh, the Western world generally tend to be the, you know, the, the world of like rationalist, empiric thinkers. This is the, uh, you know, the ha hallmark of Western philosophy, rationalism, empiric observation, all of these sort of things. So I found it interesting that people with, um, you know, uh, let's say, uh, educated in the Western line of thought, how much they admire Bhagavad Gita. And uh, <clears throat> years ago in ISKCON, to promote Bhagavad Gita, the book, uh, they started searching for any quotes by people in the Western world who were appreciating it. They even made a poster showing, you know, Emerson, Thoreau, Whitman, you know, Schopenhauer, and others. And, you know, quoting, what was the, one of the favorite quotes was from uh, Thoreau at Walden Pond, where he's living in nature by himself for a couple of years to see what that would be like to live with no one. And he said, <clears throat> it's noteworthy. He says, in the morning, means every morning when he, he says, because in the morning, what do you do when you get up in the morning? You bathe. So he said, in the morning, I bathe my intellect and the stupendous and cosmogonal glory of the Bhagavad Gita. He's saying, as people get up in the morning, they take a bath. I get up in the morning and I bathe my intellect in the Bhagavad Gita. So 
So it means Thoreau must have known something. Right? He gets some credit for this. And he said, in comparison with which, our modern literature seems truny, trivial and puny by comparison, what we've got. So that's one example. And there's so many others. But what I found interesting is a side point that <clears throat> none of them question the, the method of delivery. The general name, one of the names given, we say, uh, you know, Shabda Brahma, spiritual sound. In other words, Amnaya, Amnaya, like in Bhaktivinoda's Dasmul, Amnaya, Prahattam, Prahattatvam, Harim, Iha, Paramam, Sarva Shaktim, Rasabdim. So he starts with Amnai, revealed truth, means descending truth. It's coming from the upper world, descending into this world. So here, the method of descent I found interesting. These ra so called rational thinkers, empiric thinkers, they don't challenge the method. And I was wondering, why? Why not? We know from the beginning what we hear there, it says, you know, uh, Dhritarashtra Uvacha, you know, he, uh, what does he do? He asks Sanjay, what did my sons and the sons of Pandu do when they assembled on the battlefield of Dharmakshetra, Kurukshetra, etc. And so this Sanjay, admittedly, by what's presented in the text, he's not there. It's not that Dhritarashtra is saying, you were there, and now, um, you know, this is something that happened in the past, tell me what happened. No, he's saying, you have a, a living experience. That means, by, um, as we find out in the end, he says, Vyasa Prashada Chrutavan, by the mercy of Vyasa, I heard this divine conversation. He doesn't say, well, Arjun's chariot was here and the other, and then I, you know, I, I was like on another chariot. No, he doesn't say that. So he's admitting that he wasn't there physically, objectively. But what he's saying is, Vyasa Prashada, by the mercy of Vyas, I got some divine vision. And Dhritarashtra said, and what did, what happened? What did you hear? What did you see? And then he presents Bhagavad Gita, right? That Krishna said this, Arjun said that, the back and forth, right, of Krishna and Arjun. It's all from the mouth of Sanjay, who by his own admission is not there. I can't, I'm trying to, you know, emphasize this point. Objectively speaking, the Bhagavad Gita, that, of what we know of Bhagavad Gita, is spoken by someone who was not there. So then you would think these rational people, empiric-based, uh, you know, observers would say, well, how can he be reliable? He wasn't even there, <laughs> you know. How did he get, oh, he had some sort of a divine vision? This stuff would be mocked normally. Right? They, they would dismiss out of hand, like, oh, is he some sort of uh, trance channeler, you know, a medium? But the, I think there's a, a good explanation for why they do not that no one has brought this up or made this accusation or challenged it in this way. And what it is, the overwhelming spiritual quality of the substance of Bhagavad Gita, that cannot be denied. So the method of transmission from, uh, we will say, it's wonderful. He's saying, by the mercy of the Vyas, I got this. Uh, you know, I, was, I, got, I had this, uh, what do you say? Vision or realization, revelation. We will praise that. But what I'm saying, they can't find fault with it because of the overwhelming quality of the spiritual substance of Bhagavad Gita. It's undeniable, it's unmistakable. 
even if people have some other agenda. They're not promoting devotion to Krishna. They're promoting anything and everything but devotion to Krishna. But what they find there is so overwhelming substantially that they're uh, attracted to it. On some level, it resonates within them.